Sean. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ali Arjuini. And I'm Greg Cordone, reporting live from St. Thomas Aquinas <coughs> College News in Rockland County, New York. Tonight's top story concerns mounting tensions within the Middle East as the world contemplates retaliation against the ever-growing threat ISIS, which continues to gain key, key strongholds in both Iraq and Syria. The international realm is hastily waiting to see what effect minimal U.S. involvement has on the area, the only major Western power to promise any sort of military campaign in the region. It is believed that our country will provide the standing governments in Iraq and Syria, as well as rebel forces fighting the militant group, with both air power and equipment. The United States Air Force has hit targets in Iraq via airstrike, launching the first phases of a plan of action spelled out by President Obama in a speech to the nation last week. Sending such support will help the U.S. avoid sending ground troops, easing the tensions of many citizens concerned about the similarity of this situation to the 2004 war in Iraq. Western powers are still haunted by the memories of 2004 as they hesitate to take any real action alongside the U.S. That's all for our national news. I'm Ali Arduini. And I'm Greg Cordone. Now here's Lauren with our entertainment segment. Thanks, Greg. Well, it's time to pause from binge watching on Netflix and get ready for the new fall TV lineup. From Blackish to the Blacklist, the fall schedule is sure to have something everyone will enjoy. Let's take a look at three of the can't miss shows of the season. Fans of Will and Grace, rejoice, because Deborah Messing is returning to your TV screens Wednesdays on NBC. In her compelling new drama, The Mysteries of Laura, Messing plays a homicide detective who balances work with her crazy family life. Finally, a version of the Olivia Benson everyone always wished for. This dramedy is sure to be a viewer favorite. Next up on the lineup is Red Band Society, premiering on Fox. The drama follows a group of teenagers who are all seriously ill in the hospital. Entertainment Weekly calls it The Fault in Our Stars meets The Breakfast Club, and it is sure to attract viewers of all ages, bringing a few tears and laughs along the way. Finally, you guys definitely don't want to miss ABC's anticipated new drama, How to Get Away with Murder. Actress Viola Davis stars as a college law professor who gets herself and students involved in a murder plot. Murder meets mystery throughout the season, sending the students to their wit's end. If you're a fan of Scandal, this thriller is the perfect show for you. I'm Lauren Higgins with the inside scoop on all your entertainment news. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Lauren. In other news, with the North Carolina absentee ballots being returned, the midterm elections have begun. However, for us in New York, there is no early voting, and the polls will open on November 4th. Yet, the long wait, which may drain voter anticipation, is concerning as recent studies have shown a continued drop in Hispanic and black American turnout. Furthermore, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada has given priority to the Marketplace Fairness Act, the MFA, the online sales tax bill. Reid stressed the tax bill's importance, saying, quote, that is long, long overdue. That's right, Greg. I'll just, I guess we just have to wait and see. Now let's head over to Tim with technology news for the day. Thank you, Allie. After months of anticipation and days of waiting online and sleeping outside, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus have finally been released. Both phones, which feature bigger screens, went on sale September 19th with record sales and have mixed reviews. The iPhone 6, which, which some users are calling a larger version of the iPhone 5S, have a 4.7 inch screen, an improved Touch ID fingerprint sensor, and faster operating system. While the camera is also improved from previous models, it does not live up to that of the iPhone 6 Plus. According to CNET.com, the battery does not last any longer than the iPhone 5S, and users are not happy about that. However, the phone does have an improved retina display, and many are happy with it. For the most part, the phone is an improvement according to online reviews. Now on to the 6 Plus. With the 5.5-inch screen, many users are comparing it to the iPad Mini. According to reviews on CNET.com, the battery is bigger and is longer lasting, which is a major plus. The camera is the biggest improvement from previous models and the lower priced iPhone 6. However, many people are complaining that the phone, much thinner phone, is actually bending in their pockets. Apple is looking into these claims and looking for ways to fix the issue. While reviews for both phones were mainly positive, Apple faced a major issue with its iOS update. Users were reporting, the, reporting issues with making phone calls after they downloaded the update to their phones. Apple suspended the updates quickly and released it with an, a fix with another update for all iPhone users. Samsung, their biggest competitor, is releasing their newest phone this month. I guess we'll see who wins this round. For SAC News, I'm Tamara Simchuk. Now back to the desk. 
And in local news, Spring Valley mother Maria Guam and Guam was sentenced to 12 years in prison, as well as five years of post-release supervision for strangling her newborn baby to death in November 2013. The local resident reportedly experienced an extreme emotional disturbance, Guam and Guam testifying that the devil had entered her body, causing her to suffocate the baby and then drop the baby in a recycling bin outside of a Spring Valley convenience store. The body was later found in Brookfield Recycling in Elmsford, New York, where local authorities were notified. According to the Rockland County Times, Ms. Guam and Guam was arrested and prosecuted, receiving a relatively light sentence of 12 years due to her mental brain damage and disabilities. She will also face deportation at the end of her sentence. Now let's go to Brendan for what's new in sports today. Brendan. Thanks, guys. For the first time in Rock and Boulder's history, the team enrolled in their first Can-Am League Championship title. The Boulders, in early September, had made it to the Can-Am League Championship, which marked their first winning season and trip to the playoffs. It's the first time in its league history that a team has rallied from down 0-2 to two in the series to win the title. The Boulders, as well as their rivals, the New Jersey Jackals, have finished their regular season game on September 1st and advanced to the Can-Am Championship. The championship game, which was held at Yogi Berra Stadium on September 8th, the Rock and Boulders crushed out 12 hits and a 4-0 victory, and Bud Bukevich pitched seven scoreless innings, but Bukevich only allowed three base runners through the first two innings, giving up a pair of hits and a walk. New Jersey's biggest threat came in the bottom of the sixth when Felix Sanchez worked a one-out walk and later stole second base, marking the first time a Jackal had reached a scoring position. At the top of the seventh, Rockland put runners at first and second with one out. New Jersey then turned to, re to reliever Ty Kelly to get out of danger, but to no avail. A wild pitch advanced two runners around the bases to home and was followed by a Jared Edmondson two-run single, winning the game 4-0. to Now back to you guys. Thanks, Brendan. As for local news here at St. Thomas Aquinas College, Stack is getting ready to launch their very first blog thanks to the help of Professor Elaine Winship and our Director of Campus Communications, Danielle Coburn. The duo is leading their group of students to write about relevant and entertaining topics to engage our students in this blog that will be called Stack Chats. The team will post on a variety of different subjects including study tips, health and fitness suggestions, internship opportunities, and more. The blog will be launched during the first week of October, and we look forward to, forward to seeing what it's all about. Now let's see what Angela has to say about the weather this week. Thanks, Greg. With full now in full swing, the cooler weather is on its way. Let's take a look at the upcoming five-day forecast. Look at the weather for today. Expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 73 and a low of 59. For Wednesday... <laughs> Those partly sunny skies stick around with a high of 72, but make sure you have a jacket because at night, it's going to get a little cool. That's the wrong one. Thursday, there will be plenty of sun, but unfortunately, Friday and Saturday, we will see some scattered showers. I'm Angela Marchese with the Stack Weather. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Angela. Once again, I'm Greg Cordone. And I'm Ali Arduini. Thank you for tuning into Stack News. Have a wonderful night.